Good evening, Bearcats. Um, this is Pre-Cal, and this is 2.6 Polynomial and Rational Functions Day 2. Today we're going to talk about what I mentioned yesterday, oblique and, um, <coughs> excuse me, oblique asymptotes and holes in your graph are points of removable discontinuity. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want to go right. I want to go over one more time our process for graphing rational functions. Um, the first thing I want to mention to you: make sure you're sketching as you go. So as you find different points along your graph, go ahead and sketch those as you move along. It'll help you identify and um, the picture of the graph. One, the first thing you're going to do, number one, would be to factor all that you can. If you have a cancellation in your factoring in the numerator and denominator that cancels, then you will probably have a whole or a movable discontinuity in your graph. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are the values that make the denominator zero. We've thought of these in the past as your restrictions, or you can call them your excluded regions. Number three, we're going to look for horizontal asymptotes. This is where you can compare the degree of the numerator with the degree of the denominator. If you don't have a horizontal asymptote, then you may have a slant or an oblique asymptote. This occurs if the degree of the numerator is greater by one degree. We're going to work an example like that in a minute. Number four, we want to identify any x-intercepts. That would be what makes the numerator zero. If you've already factored, it's pretty easy to determine those zeros. Um, and that makes sense because it is what makes the uh, x-intercept is the values that make uh, y zero or your function zero. Well, in a fraction, if the numerator is zero, then the entire uh, fraction is zero. All right, number five, we will identify the y-intercepts, and that is when we make all the x values zero each time graphing these pieces of information that you find. And number six, we're going to find any additional points that we think we might need. We could use a t-table to do that. And finally, we're going to graph. All right, let's look at the following examples. All right, let's take our first example. And our function we're going to use is x squared minus x over x plus 1. All right, that step one, remember, was to factor all that we can. So we could factor an x out of the top and have x times x minus 1. In the denominator, of course, we have x plus 1. All right, we factored all that we can. Uh, unfortunately, there are no cons uh, cancellations, so this is the simplest form of the function right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find our vertical asymptotes. And remember, our vertical asymptotes are what make the denominator zero. In this case, that would be negative one. So our vertical asymptote would be x equals negative one. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to our graph, and I'm going to highlight where x is at, how did I write three? Huh? At negative one. All right, so I'm going to highlight that, or I'm going to um, mark on our graph x equals negative 1, that would be an asymptote. Let's put it in a bright color so we can see it better. So we're going to go over here, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do x is negative 1. So that would be our asymptote. So my asymptote's in orange. There we go. All right, let's go back to uh, continuing to find other parts of our graph. All right, the next thing we're going to do is number step number three, I believe, is to find the horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote um, is when we're comparing the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. In this case, the degree of the numerator is a second degree, and the degree of the denominator is a first degree. So it's greater at the top. And if it's greater at the top, then we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. So do we have a slant? 
Well, if it's greater by 1, and in this case it is greater by 1. So we're going to divide our, our rational expression. We're going to divide the uh, denominator into the numerator and find our equation of our slant asymptote, which is also um, our um, oblique. It's also called an oblique asymptote. So let's do that. So we're going to take x squared minus x, and I'm just going to use long division. You could also use, um, that's terrible, we can also use uh, synthetic division if you prefer. In this case, probably both would be pretty easy. I'm going to go over and use long division. I'm going to divide by x plus 1. All right, x times something gives me x squared. That would be x, so I have x squared. x times 1 is x. Remember, you're subtracting both, so that cancels. We've got negative 2x. x goes to negative 2x negative 2 times. That would be negative 2x, and then that would be negative 2, which we don't have anything left, and you would um, go ahead and distribute the negative through, and those would cancel. Um, when we get ready to find our slant asymptote, we're only looking for the linear equation. We really don't care about a remainder. So if you were to get a remainder, or here we have this remainder, you can kind of ignore that for right now. Our slant or oblique asymptote would be y equals x minus 2. So let's go ahead and put that in also in our orange so that we can see that clearly on our graph. And then we're going to start to graph some points. So y equals x minus 2. That would mean our y-intercept's at negative 2, and our slope is um, 1, is positive 1. y equals x minus 2. So positive 1, so it would go up 1, down 1, and then up 1, down 1, and 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 up 1, down 1. And we'll do the same thing going the other way. And there you go. All right, so there's our slant asymptote. All right, let's go on and continue the process. So we found our slant asymptote. We did not have a horizontal asymptote. Our vertical asymptote was negative 1, and we have factored everything out. Next thing we're going to do is look for x-intercepts. X-intercepts would be the things that make the numerator in this case, 0. I believe that would be a 0 or a 1 would be our x-intercept. So we go to our graph and we're going to plot 0 on the x-axis and we're going to plot 1 on the x-axis. Oops. Okay, that gives us a couple of points. All right, let's see what else we've got. Let's see if we do number 5, which would be our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is going to make all the x's 0. If I go back to the original and make all the x's 0, we would end up with 0 over uh, 1, and that would be 0. So our y-intercept is, is 0, which we've already graphed here. All right, this time we have a little bit more missing information. We need some more points to be able to graph carefully. You always want to pick points on the left and right of your vertical asymptote. We know what's happening to the right. We know when x is 0 and x is 1 what is happening. Let's figure out what happens if x is at negative 2, which would be the other side. So maybe negative 2 and maybe negative 3. Let's see what kind of values we get for that. All right, so at negative 2, let's see. I think it's easier sometimes to use the um, factored version to figure this out. If we have a negative 2, we'd have negative 2 here. If we had a negative 2 here, negative 2 minus 1 would be negative 3. We'd have negative 2 times negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 would be positive 6. And then uh, at the bottom, we would have negative 2 and 1, which would be negative 1 which finally gives us negative 6. And for 3, let's do the same thing. So negative 3 would be have negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And at the bottom, we have negative 3 plus 1. 
negative 3 plus 1 would be negative 2, and 12 divided by negative 2 would be negative 6 also. Okay, so we have a little more information about our graph now. So at negative 2, we are at negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And at negative 3, we're also at 6, negative 6. So I'm going to assume that we're going to come up in that corner and come back down. If we wanted to pick a point in between, we could, um, but that would uh, we're not going to do that today. So we know we're going to approach the asymptotes and we're in these two little corners. So we approach the asymptote on this side. We're going to come down and go through these two points and go back up over here. And on this side, again, we approach the asymptote and we're going to come back down and go this way. All right. There's a, a problem with a slant asymptote. Next, let's look at one that might have a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. All right, here's our example here. We have x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, remember our first step is to factor everything. So at the top, it looks like we have a difference of squares. We'd have x plus 3 and x minus 3. In the bottom, it looks like we have a trinomial that we can factor, x and x. Multiply to negative 3, add to 2, negative 2. So I think it's a negative 3 and a positive 1. All right, we have fully factored everything. Notice something that I just see right now. Notice something that I see, that you have a neg x minus 3 and an x minus 3. Those are going to cancel. So our reduced equation is x plus 3 over x plus 1. And this is the equation we would use to graph. However, we need to make note of this cancellation. This cancellation means we have a whole in the graph where x is 3, okay, where x is 3. So we'll have a hole in the graph where x is 3. So that's kind of important in a minute, um, and we'll make sure we go back and graph that. All right, our next step is to do our vertical asymptote. Remember, the vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator 0. In this case, that would be negative 1. So it would be x equals negative 1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and graph that. So when our x value is at negative 1, remember a while ago we put that at orange. Let's do that again. So our, our asymptote, our vertical asymptote is at negative 1. We're going to next find the horizontal asymptote. The um, horizontal asymptote is when we compare the degrees. The degree in the top and the degree in the bottom are both the first degree, so it would be the coefficients, which would be 1 over 1. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. Let's go ahead and mark that on our graph. So y equals 1. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and keep figuring out what else, what other information we have and what we might need to go look for in a table of values. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to look for the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts, remember, are what make the um, um, numerator 0 what make the numerator 0. And so in this case, our graph we're looking at would be at negative 3. So we have an x-intercept at negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, and we have an x-intercept. All right, number next problem, I mean next part, we're going to do y-intercept. Y-intercept, so we make everything 0, that would be 3 over 1, which would be positive 3. So our y-intercept's at positive 3. Get a few points on the graph. All right. Uh, now that we've done that, let's see if we can find um, a few more points along our graph. You can pretty much know what quadrants you're in of the sections you're in of the graph, and you know that at the extremes you'd be heading toward the asymptotes, and we could just graph it that way, but let's go ahead and find a couple more points just for good measure. All right, so let's go ahead. We know what happens at 0. Let's see what happens when x is 1. And we know what happens at 
negative three. So let's find out what would happen. Um, let's see. Let's find out what would happen when um, x is like negative four. Okay, just those two pieces of information probably will give us enough. Let's see if we plug a one in. Let's go back to this equation. We plug a one in, we would get a four. We plug a one in the bottom, we would get a two, and that would equal two. So at one, we're at one, two. Ah, same thing as we had while ago for that little dip thing. All right, at negative four, negative four. And three is negative one, and negative four plus one is negative three. Excuse me. Which would be positive one third. So at negative four, one, two, three, four, we're at positive one third. we're going to get one more point on each side. So we had over here, we had 0, 1. Let's just try what happens at 2. 2 plus 3 would be 5, and 2 plus 1 would be 3, and that would be 1 and a third, just for good measure. So at 2, we're at 1 and a third. Okay, um, somehow I missed this over here a while ago when we were at zero. If x was at zero, we would have three over one or three, so we would have a point right there. I think I put the wrong point in there. All right, and now let's go ahead and check out what happens um, at negative five. Negative five and three is a negative two, and negative five and one would be a negative four which is positive one half. So at five, negative five, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, we're at one half. All right, I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and draw our graph in toward the asymptotes. Remember at the extremes of our graph. And our graph will look something like that. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. That gets you through an oblique asymptote. It gets you through a removable discontinuity, which is a hole in your graph. Oh, we didn't put the hole down. Got to do that. Really important. Let's put that hole down. All right, the next thing we do, our hole was where x is 3. So we're going to go to our graph where x is 3. I'm going to try to do this in another color so it will make it a little bit clearer for us. Uh, we're going to go where x is 3. 1, 2, Three, and we're going to go up and we're actually going to have a hole in the graph right there. And that's how we would mark that. All right, hopefully that helps. I hope you have a good evening and I will see you tomorrow. Night, Bearcats.